remember that who we are right now and what we are having, our worthiness doesn't base up on any external circumstances or reality that you're in right now. Your worthiness truly comes from the one thing that is our source, that is universe. You can call it grace, um, you can call it God, you can call it universe. But it comes from a place knowing that you're born here. You and your life have a purpose and a meaning attached to it. And you are meant to live the best out of your life. Welcome to Impact Me Podcast. In the world of empowered feminine, we are the creator of our own story. My name is Mai Vu, your empowerment coach in love, and each week I will bring you an incredible mindset shift, an inspiring conversation, all the tool and the technique to help you transforming your fear, connect back to your heart, and start owning your worth, and finally be loved for who you truly are. On this empowering journey with me, you would feel worthy at the core to never settle for anything less than the destined love you are meant to have in this lifetime. Now grab your cup of tea and tune into today's episode with me, shall we? This is an episode full of inspiration for Impact Me podcast that I get a chance to, to um, deliver a talk in Mashida Feminine Leadership in the Circles. And I'm very grateful that I get to share it here with you girls. I've got divinely um, guided on this talk and the three elements that really help you transforming your worthiness issue. So tune in and get yourself um, spired up with information and also the, the wisdom that is going to get you fulfill the next whatever goal you are trying to accomplish. And I would love to hear your breakthrough after listening to this. I know it is going to be phenomenal for you. Um, because it was so inspiring for me and a lot of the women who was in that room at that time. So tune in and enjoy. And I'm so happy to share my story with you because I come from a place um, where I live in Vietnam. And I uh, five years ago, that was when I started to have my first um, embark up on a spiritual connection. I'm a Buddhist, by the way, so I really love um, when um, she talks about Buddhism medicine because it's wonderful. I keep seeing the vision of I was able to help a lot of women um, changing their life and getting out of suffering in love and getting out of, uh, of pain in love, but I refuse to start acting on that desire. It, and, and then universe is so wonderful. It just gave me bigger gifts of, of heartbreaks and a few heartbreaks after that, which led me to start um, following through international coaching. I keep refusing my call because I got transformation in that coaching and I got changed my whole uh, love and relationship around, but I refused the call to become a coach. So I told Mushida that, Supposedly, I should be a coach three years ago, not a year ago. So I just launched business a year ago, and now I am already earning consistent uh, five-figure months, uh, Moshida knows. And it is a wonderful thing. Things can transform in such a blink of an eye when you are available for it. So I suppose I was supposed to be a coach three years ago, but I refused that because I wanted to stay in the safe zone. I wanted to stay in the family zone. And the one thing I keep telling myself is, who am I? Who am I to coach people? Who am I to share this message? Who am I to tell everyone that they can get to live a happy life that woman deserves to have the, the grandest, beautiful, most loving husband and then having a happy family and also a career? Who am I to say that to them? And because I say, who am I to say that to them? Universe got me into a hot, um, a hot, a very painful situation. And I was carrying my baby. And to show me that through that pain, I'm the child of universe. I'm the child of God. And I get all the support that I need in order to follow through with my desire. So that was when I was awakened to the fact that, yes, if I get to rely on the most powerful source of it all, which is my universe, and no man, no job, and none of my family member is my source of money or love or attention, universe is. And that was the moment where I realizing that I'm worthy to have it all. And that breaking moment was when I finally acclaiming my worth by saying that I give myself the permission 
to have this. I like whatever I wanted to achieve. I give myself the permission to to have it. Whatever, like I I want to make five k month, ten k month. I give myself the permission to achieve that. We only ask for just enough, right? We only ask for just survival. We only ask for just enough so that we survive another month, right? Anyone is with me here? Um, just say yes in the chat box to too, so I know that I'm not the only one who's surviving so long. But we forgot that because when you ask for just enough, that is when universe doesn't deliver. Because the universe don't want you to survive. Universe want you to live in joy and thriving, and happiness and fulfillment, and that was driving your source of living. So I got that secret of manifestation. When you allow yourself to earn and receive what you need for number one to um, sustain your life, and number two to fulfill your dream, and number three to go bigger and create a bigger impact on people's life, you are fully get granted the permission to go for it and having it and having it and receiving it. So I want to share a miracle story with you today. Anyone is anyone is open for miracle? I hope that this community is open for universe and miracles. Yesterday on a morning walk, I got three signs of miracle um, that I got from my universe, and it was so wonderful because I know it is not just meant for me; it is meant for women who I uh, get to encounter this week, and especially in this community. Those three signs were. A flock of parrots, a red beautiful flowers right outside of my window, and also a universal book. And that three signs give me the three elements that I want to really emphasize on the talk. That is, the parrots is a representation of inner dialogue. That there's something about yourself, about your inner talk, has to be changed so that you get to own the value that you want to become. Like you get to be. Start becoming the woman that you always wanted to become. You know her. You see her in your meditation, but you haven't been her because your inner dialogue hasn't matching with what you wanted to be. So that is about the parents. It is the sign of inner dialogue. The second one is out of the entire tree outside of my window, like a huge tree. There's only one flower, only one, and that flower is in red color, and that the symbolic of connecting back to your divinity. To your sacred chakras, to your femininity. Um, so that is the second sign of connection back with the femininity. And the third one is a divine book. In Vietnamese, in Sydney, have you ever think that, like in Sydney, on a street library, they have like a boxes of books on the street. I've never taken that route of walk before, and I was so happy to see a Vietnamese book, and it was written about universal connection and universal law, the law of oneness. So I really wanted to emphasize on three elements on this um, sign that I've got here. That is. When you realize that you have the feminine connection, the spiritual connection, and when you change, start changing your inner dialogue, what you talk about yourself, how you giving yourself more permission to work into, to to earn more, to receive more, that is when you get to start owning and earning your worth. So. How many of you have discounts your ability to be able to learn to speak up about the topic that we want to speak up? You know that it's so true in your heart. You know that it is absolutely like something that you really wanted to share. But most often we can't find that voices, right? At the beginning phase of my business, even though I just launched my business about 20 months ago. Um, at the beginning phase, I found it so hard to assessing my voice. I I can't write. It took me like an hour or two to write one single post of like forty or fifty words. No kidding. And right now, I can write like a whole two weeks in within a morning, and like EDM and all of that. And what I realized was that that time I shut my my voice down for so long, twenty six, twenty seven years of just shutting my voice down, listening to other people, letting other people deciding my life, letting other people speak up about what they want for me, and never acknowledge what do I want for myself. Letting people voices be louder than my own intuitive voice, letting my fear voice be bigger than my my gut instinct. So I realized that I have. Never actually putting in an effort to neutral and reconnect back to my intuition boy, and that was when I have to go through all the inner work and um, to get back to where, like, I get to start listening to what I do I like, what do I not like during a very normal daily life. So, like, if I want to, if 
beef noodle soup, which is a Vietnamese favorite, or do I want to eat uh, bread today? So like to that daily encounter, I have to check in with my feeling. What would I want to choose? Which one option do I want to go? And I have trained myself and retraining myself and put myself in a neutral energy so that whenever I am going into a mode of comparison, jealousy, or thinking that I'm not good enough, my body started to feel weird, to feel different. And I I immediately know that, oh, I'm, I am cycling a thought. I am talking something about myself that is not the truth. So I really want to help you here to develop better awareness over your inner dialogue and to allow yourself to speak up. Whatever your truth is, it is the truth. This is what I learned from Morgan Freeman from the Story of God show. Whatever it is, the tr- it is your truth. It is the truth. So don't worry about what if I got it wrong. Don't worry about what if I say something wrong. If you get to share a post and that change one life, that is worthy enough. Like regardless of ten other people saying that you suck, you don't like you don't write it well enough. I'm not. It's not clear for me. Regardless of that, the other ten people. If you're focusing on who do you want to serve, what do you want to create as an impact? Because we are in here not just to make money. We are making impact. Then you keep focusing on who do you want to show up for. And and put her. I put my ideal clients on the on the desktop, and I look at her every day. Pray over her. I I ask God and universe, what kind of message do I get to share with her today? And I talk to her. I talk to her in every single post that I write. That is when I found my voices, and now I am so confident in speaking up. And to, this morning, actually, I just share in my Vietnamese. And I know that whatever I share is really influential to them. And I start sharing about my Buddhism um, awakening journey, and I know that that is in turn would help people um, realizing there is a new way of of living that is compassionate, loving, and so so welcoming. So like, and and for me, Buddhism or Muslim or Christian, the teachers all want us to live in harmony and to live in peace and honor. All religions here, and if you get to believe in something, you don't have to force other people to believe the same way, but you get to share it so that the right woman, the right people that would need your help, would know that you can help them. So that is about sharing your voice and accessing and changing your inner dialogue to allow yourself going up, showing up, and give yourself the permission to go for it and create the impact that you want to see in other people's lives. So we are here not just to making the KK thing. Like it's never about that for me. It's about who am I changing my life? And I am having here of many beautiful clients that are following me for the past one year have changed their lives significantly. And for the fact that I was in it to help them, not to my myself famous. So that is about inner dialogue. Um, the second is about femininity, and I want to really go into like you can go with a lot of thing about femininity, but at the core, femininity is about getting good at at what people can, can you get getting good at receiving. How many times have you been asking for your God, praying for your God, meditating into talking with your God, but you haven't asked, like you haven't opened yourself. But down to receive it because you don't think that you deserve to receive what you're asking, right? You you have a goal and you ask, but you never actually allow yourself open your heart up to receive it and to feel it in the core that yes, if I can think of it and believing in it, it is meant for me. You haven't allowed yourself to to know that whatever is true in your heart, that is the desire that is lying in your heart. If you can see it in your vision, it is meant for you. It is not meant for anyone else because every one of us is a unique human being, and we have a unique purpose in this life. And that desire lying in your heart, it is a unique and it's made for you. And if you haven't been able to see how it has been made for you, you can see that you you are going to meet a lot of women who are making a bigger impact and who are making a greater money than you. And don't find yourself jealous with her because that is the manifested outcome of what you desire. That is how I see other people in the community where I am in. Many, many influential, many empowering women. I get to look at her. I get to see what do I want that she have, and I let that be the inspiration for me to start receiving that for myself. If she can receive that, I get to receive that. And the only difference that me and her 
it is a level of, of self-permission. So manifestation of money, it is nothing but level of self-permission that you're giving to yourself. Are you giving yourself that level of permission to receive what you are asking, what you are praying over God, what you are really thinking about that they would really help me if I, if I get to manifest this money. Because when you keep praying, but you don't open yourself up to, to take action and to receive it, God can't finish and God can't deliver that for, for you. So usually people think we people never act up on something that they know is good for them, like saying showing up consistently on social media or live streaming every single day even no one watching you. Like I mean, I've been there, ladies. I've been live streaming, no one watched me. And it feel like what? It feel really, really, really bad. <laughs> it feels so awful. Because no one was watching you felt like you are the best kept secret of the world. <laughs> so I've been there and I really want you to know that if you if you know that like by live streaming, even no one watching, you're going to get better at speaking. You're going to get deliver a more empower, empowering message. That is when you start showing up and your clients start seeing you and, and wanting to work with you. When you give up even before showing up consistently, that is when God can't, can't come in and finish the work. You have been praying, but you don't take the necessary actions. That is when God can't come in and finish the work. So get good at receiving is knowing what kind of action that is practical I have to do every single day to get to where I want it to be, but I'm open for a miracle. That is how I am. For the, for the past 20 months of my business, the, the only um, time that it started to feel like I have a break is only at the beginning of this year. For the first, for the first nine months, it was me moving houses, moving to a new country, move back to Sydney, having my baby. I just stopped breastfeeding last March. So everyone who are mom here, you know what I'm talking about. Breastfeeding my baby, still having her around, crying at every single moment, but nights out without any like a notification. I wanted to be like clean and clear with energy, but I can't. Life doesn't give me that easy assignment, but it gave me a much better assignment so that I get to become a better woman for her. So getting good at receiving is the second thing that you to get uh, really, really mastering in like allowing yourself to receive. Like I'm allowing myself to receive this much money. I'm allowing myself to receive this much community. Changing that mantra every single day instead of focusing on, oh, I have only 20 people in my account or in my Facebook and only one people watching my live stream. I allow myself to receive 20 women watching my live stream next time. I allow myself to have, I mean, like honestly, I didn't realize my word was so powerful until it was become true. Last March, I told myself that I want 350 women in my community at that time I only have about 190 and then I host a summit that draw in about 100 women even though I have 250 women sign up and I was like oh my god it is 30th, 30th of March I only have 290 I have no way that is going to be 350 and guess what someone talk about me someone sh just share about me and people flying into my to my Facebook and right now I have over a thousand over a thousand in my both community within two months no one I mean like I have never been able to imagine that this is a favor of universe when you get to allow yourself to receive so the last the last message is about divine connection you get to come and be here and live here. I don't believe that we are living here for 80, 80 years to, to be in miserable, to be in struggling, to be in, in, in survival. We get to live the best life. You get to claim your abundant life only from a position of you realizing and reminding that you are the child of universe. Every single day, look at you when you are struggle. Look at you when you're frustrated. Look at you like a mother looking at her baby because God or universe or, or your God is looking at you those same way with that unconditional love wanting to help you trying to open the bottle like mom i don't need your help i just trying to open my bottle but i don't know how but i never ask how <laughs> right like you try to get through these struggles but you never ask never open yourself and ask hey universe show me a better way whenever right now whenever i find myself stuck i put a, a meditation i put in a meditation i go for a prayer i ask 
Mir- uh, universe, please show me what you've got. <laughs> universe, please show me your miracle. So yesterday, during that morning walk, I was feeling stuckness. I was feeling like I don't want to be showing up. I don't want to live my best life like June. Like I have amazing months already. I just want to rest. And then I, I, I tell myself to go for a walk because when you move your body, you get back to your, your body. That is when you connect back to your intuition. And then I was surrendering the whole walk. I was like telling my universe, I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I surrender this worry. I surrender these struggles. I surrender this stuckness. I don't know what it is, but please show me how to get back to where you want me to be. And that is when I received that three signs. And I know that whichever position I'm in, whichever situation I'm in, if I get to remember that I can ask my my universe to come in and guide me and, and show me the way, that is when I surrender to receive the sign or the message and follow through with it. Because when you see the sign or the message, you have to follow through with it. That is your breakthrough. Really, that is your door to transitioning to a new level of yourself. And if you re- keep refusing the call, if you keep thinking that it is too much I am not that brave right now I can't be it I don't have the time whichever the excuses it would take you out of the game and I would say even either you can make excuses or you make time to follow your dream and invest in yourself so I believe Moshida have talked about the community but I want to add in the last factor that that I found really helpful for my growth for claiming my worth is to invest significant amount on myself I mean it is significant in comparing to Vietnam dong. Malaysia, you have a much better earning income than in Vietnamese. It is so significant that it was literally my saving. And my, my saving for my baby, I have no one financially support me. And I told my coach, this is exactly the, the money that I had. And I believe that it is going to come back to me. And she said, yes, I believe that too. My, and that is when I put the first investment. And now I have been on that path for, I mean, like... I forgot who I was before now. <laughs> the next program, it's just in a, in a tingle like this because if I desire it, the universe show up with abundance to give me that. So I really want you to know that mentoring, coaching and mentoring, investing in yourself is really beautiful. I, I remember in a podcast I listened to lately, there was a multimillionaire a woman and um, she was so admirable. She was so inspirational. I think her name is Alison Bird. Uh, bird with the Y, and she talked about how she helped um, raising the worthiness with her nephew and her nieces because they they still have generation of feeling unworthy of buying grocery for themselves. And she told the, each one of them to grab whatever they want, and she asked them, "Do you want this?" They say yes, but do you believe that you're worthy of it? They can't answer it. And she let each one of them like gather the commodity that they want and check out. And it, it, with, whether it is $20 or $50, she said that, listen, love, this is the money that you are worthy for us to invest in yourself. You are worthy for us to raise and to put that money into yourself. That is how she start helping the next generation to claim their worthiness. And I want you to say the same to yourself. This is the money that you deserve to invest in yourself. Get help with coaching. And that is how you start seeing the significant change. And I told myself I deserve to get into the game of international coaching to be amongst the beautiful women that I am always looking up to. And now within just a, a year time, I get to stand amongst them. I get to associate with Mashida. I really admire her work and her story as well. And I get to have meet many amazing other women. That can't happen if I don't make a decision to invest in myself and know that I am worthy of that money. So thank you so much for listening. And I wanted to give a gift of worthiness meditation. Um, I'm going to drop all the link down below. So thank you for listening to today's episode. What do you learn from this? What do you recognize as the worthiness? Where does it lie? And I would love to hear from you and you truly your takeaway. I hope that this episode would go serve you one way or another to fulfill your dream and your desire. 
don't forget that I teach intensively about worthiness and also limiting beliefs, fear and all of that in Dare to Dream, which I'm about to launch again at the end of July. And if you would love to join it at such amazing rate and at the same time receive my bonus of 30 minutes transformative coaching with me, go ahead and inbox me at empower.muse or message me on Empower Muse Drive. I would love to hear from you and see what takeaways you have. And I'm here to get you to the next step that lead you to your dream life. Um, stay happy and stay fulfilled always and always stay empowered in life and in love. Um, until next time, have a good day. Thank you for tuning into the show today. I appreciate your time because time is the most valuable access that you can have. Thoughts go stronger when it is shared. So if you love this episode, please give it a review, subscribe, and share it with your girlfriends or your sister. It would mean the world to me to get this message out there to a larger audiences. Because as a woman, I believe that we are destined to be loved for exactly who we are. Don't forget to tag me at empower.news if you're sharing on Instagram. And until next time, follow your heart and always stay empowered in love. See ya ladies. Bye bye.